Hey there, uh, this is a reboxing of the Panasonic DVX200. Uh, the reason why I bought it was obviously it's supposed to be one of the best uh, run and shoot documentary kind of things, live footage, all that fun stuff. Uh, I don't know, for 4000 plus it didn't wow me. The picture is really nice, but the casing is very cheaply made. The lid, the... Uh, Enclosures are extremely cheaply made, and I think after a few months of running and shooting, they would just become loose, and you'd end up using tape to hold them in, which is kind of stupid if you're buying a $4,000 camera. So basically, I'm just going to quickly show you, and you'll hear the audio of the opening and closing and all that fun stuff, but I'm going to make this quick, but it really turned me off of wanting to keep this camera. So here we go. So here's the top one of the top lids right there and you'll see that's a little bit more firm it's full I don't know what kind of plastic you call that but it's a lot firmer than another one that's a really cool feature right here where it pulls out the LCD screen it's a little bit tough to get it back in again I was using one hand but it's a little tight but and glitchy but it actually it's a really cool feature I think and right here is the battery enclosure which it's a little I don't know. Again, it's cheaply made. I mean, just look at it. When you feel it, it just feels a lot cheaper. And here is probably where I just said, screw this, I'm fucking taking this back. Or sending it back. I got this off Autorama. This is an actual, it's a really solid piece right here that uh, encloses... I forget what that is. But uh, that's really solid piece of plastic right here kind of solid it snaps in you can hear it snap in but again it's really light it uh it just doesn't feel like it's gonna last for months you know and this is the worst right here this is what really turned me off this you can totally just barely touch it and it comes right open i mean it barely makes a sound when you open it like it's not notching in fully which maybe this is I got the, I got a dud, but I mean it's horrible, and that's a big flapping piece that I really don't want to be putting duct tape or some shit on. I mean, just listen to it, and then the comp compare it, and that thing's gonna. Be, I'm serious. That thing I thought was gonna be flapping when I was filming, just testing it out. I mean, it's bad. I mean, listen to the other ones. They snap. They click. That one's just bad. Microphone next. And here's just the, the little uh, microphone holder you attach. Yeah, it's it's cheap, but I mean, it works. And here's just a little shot. I mean, I'm sure you've all seen this. It's just the nice side they always show. They always show the red side. Um, just because it has all the features and everything on it, and it looks really awesome. Looks nice. Very nice. Turn to the other side. Eh, it's kind of boring, dull, everything's covered up. Not really anything going on. And they always show it with that attached um, shotgun mic, which, when you get it, it looks a lot more unimpressive because it doesn't come with it. Um, another thing it doesn't come with is a remote, which kind of sucks. Here's the auto white balance, which is in the front, kind of hidden. It's a little weird for me. I don't know. Maybe I'm just used to the FX1, but uh, here's the boxes. I mean, they're huge. You got to sign for this when it's uh, delivered to you. Uh, you so you got to be there. Um, I mean, which makes sense. I mean, it's four thousand over four thousand dollars worth. Boxes are huge, and it comes really, really uh, well uh, protected. Um, and again, I already returned this is I already returned this to Adorama. They gave me a complete refund, no hassle. I did have to pay for the return shipping. Another thing about the battery is it doesn't sh on the LCD it doesn't show the remaining life, which really kind of sucks. I mean, even though they're not that accurate anyway, but my old my old Sony that it has it. So why shouldn't this one? It should be an option at least. Uh, yeah, you just kind of have to guess it by the bars, which, yeah, whatever. If you're out in the field, that kind of sucks. Whatever. Have another battery and have fun. Hopefully this will drop in price dramatically soon and some of y'all can use it.
There is one thing I wanted to mention about the viewfinder versus the LCD automatic switching or shut off, whatever you want to call it. I think it's a really cool feature once you get used to it. I can understand at first if you didn't do your research that it would you would think there was something wrong. Uh, it's cool. I mean, it saves battery life. So, uh, you know, I'm there. You go. I'm gonna show you with my hand like how sensitive it is, and you know, kind of how where you need to be before it shuts off and switches. But I mean, you'll learn that. It took me about a half an hour to get used to it. No sweat. I think it's pretty cool. All in all, there's some cool stuff with this camera, but eh, four thousand dollars, man. Woo. All right. See ya.